Hello, and... Well, that's going to be an awkward edit. I forgot how to set it to 50 for it to actually work on the caps card. So, welcome to a new Let's Play. I recently got this game when my mother had found it far a cheaper price than I originally saw it at, although it's still a bit pricey considering how old the game is. But hey, what can you do with old games? Just like, ridiculous. The odd thing is my mother recently bought like a PS2 with like 50 games or something like that for my nephew, who's like under a hundred quid. Jesus Christ, man, the price is, is like sometimes it's incredibly cheap and then other times it's like ridiculously priced and expensive. But you see that logo, you see the title, yep. I've mentioned in the past that I wasn't going to LP another Pokemon game and that if I did, that it would probably be uh, Pokemon Soul Silver, and that would only be if I was able to record it off of, you know, the uh, uh, DS itself. But, you know... I'd remembered that Pokemon Coliseum had a sequel and I'd never played it, and then I looked up the game. I mentioned this in one of my other LPs, I think it was Cattle Show on my other channel, or maybe it was The Sims Bus Now on this channel, the final answer. Dan, doesn't matter! But essentially, the price for it was outrageous, so I was like, oh, fuck that. Then my mother found it for a more reasonable price, it's like, ah, uh, sure, why not? Although it's still kind of an unreasonable price, if you ask me, considering how old the game is. But hey, got the game, let's do this, you know, like, the return of a Pokemon Let's Play, and it's a sequel to Pokemon Coliseum, I've played a bit of it, but uh, another thing, like, this happens all the damn time these days, so here's like, kind of trail of thing, kind of, you know, so, this time around, we're younger, we've got a little sister, but, uh, while it is the same region as Colosseum and six place apparently five years after, there are new locations, some old faces and some new faces, all that jazz. New Pokemon. A downgrade there, you know, like in the Pokemon Colosseum, I think the bike looked much better and now we've just got to like a scooter, it's like we're gonna be delivering pizzas or something, except we aren't. Wait! Yep, some old faces and new faces. So, Guns Up, Guns Up, whatever his name is, still around. We got the Snag Machine again. Only our main Pokemon is just an Eevee instead of, you know, having Umbra and an Espion. We've just got one Eevee. Which. <laughs> Leads to a point where you like get all the. Well, we'll get to that soon enough. But man, there's one point where it's just like. This is like selecting your Pokemon at the start of a game and like. Just like only worse. And apparently. Oh, Mirror B, yeah, he's back. I haven't run into him yet because I only played through like the beginning of the game more or less. I haven't even got around to like. Yeah, Shadow Pokemon are back, yes, yes. Just so much to comment on, surprisingly. <laughs> XT! And you got Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno. And Lugia. Yep. The main ones are Shadow Lugia. I don't know how they got a Shadow Lugia. I don't know the plot. This is kind of blind LP as a result. So, Mount Battle. So, uh, yeah. Start! I said start. Yes, yes, yes. I have got a save game, but I'm not going to continue from that. I'm going to start a new game. I didn't really go really that far for the game. And, uh, here's one thing. I'm currently using my nephew's Nintendo Wii because my one seems to be on its way out. Because it just randomly would stop working. And if it turns out that it's actually the game disc that's the problem, I'm going to be mildly pissed off considering how much I freaking pay for the damn game. Ridiculous. But I think it's the Wii because it already stopped only like a damn razor whenever it was switched on. While my nephew's Nintendo Wii doesn't sound like that at all. So much more reliable. But anyway, so, as I mentioned, 
I didn't have any plans originally to play an old Pokemon game ever, like after Emerald, that was it. I've said that, and it's like... I didn't LP a Pokemon game last year, but I'm gonna LP one this year, it seems. And it's gonna be Blind, which is totally different from all the other ones, because I've never actually played this one. So, well, I have, but only briefly, and that was yesterday. Well, enough babbling, let's get on with it. Saving during their game, yeah, yeah, yeah. They really get. That's. And look at this! The default name is my name! So the protagonist's name is Michael, which is my name, and it's actually the default name of the protagonist. I don't think that's ever happened in any game that I've ever played where the default name of the protagonist actually has my name. So, you know the odd thing is, like, some reoccurring characters will just be like, Oh, so you must be Michael then. It's just like, obviously the default... Well, they aren't even gonna... I don't think they... I don't even know. But since I played Pokemon Coliseum, I named the protagonist Michael, you know, because it's my name and all that. So it just kind of seemed like it'd be confusing since it takes place in the same universe and area only five years after. So it's like, just feels confusing. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But just get on with it. So the plot starts off on a boat. It's like, haven't we got wonderful facial features? Then suddenly... I think it makes it seem like they're the only two people on the entire ship. And like, Shadow is like, holy shit! It's like, is that a shiny Lugia? No, it's a Shadow Lugia! Run! Oh wait, we can't run, we're on a ship! Overboard! Now, considering how big that ship is and I was lifted when they fell, seems to indicate, it makes uh, the fact that they're casually just like, oh shit, and alive, all the more confusing, because realistically, I think it would have gone much worse than that for them. And then it does the odd thing of this. Throws you into a random battle with no explanation whatsoever. So you're just like, what, I've got Salamence? Yeah, it's kind of an odd introduction to the game. It's just like, oh shit, have I got Salamence for a starting Pokemon? No, no. We'll find out what all this is about once I knock this Metagross out. Your sludge has nothing on me. Also, from what I've heard of the soundtrack so far, I prefer the original in Coliseum. A lot more guitar soloing, like... But it does have a bit of that, I think. It has some retaining kind of tracks, only kind of remixed. But it does seem to have more of that kind of hip-hop drum beat going on a bit. Alright, Michael, this will do for today. Yes, sir, that was a well-played battle. Like, well, your battle skills have improved by an amazing amount. I mean, it was impressive the way you handled that big Pokemon with... Uh, a, a plum? Plum? It's a Salamence, but maybe that's his nickname. I have no idea. You took command of it as if, you were, if it were the same as your Eevee. How many gym badges have you got? None? How the hell do you do that? Don't you think it's time that you consider raising your Pokemon beside your Eevee? The odd thing is, uh, we've got an Eevee. And it's only level 10, it's just like, raising, it makes it seem like he's had it for a long time, and it's still level 10. But then there are trainers, like, in the beginning of the game that act like, and seem to indicate that they've been, you know, Pokemon trainers for quite a long time, and yet they have wicked shit Pokemon, which makes no sense. Oh, I never noticed that. Serious nature obtained from Michael's dad. Huh. So, like... Obviously, Eevee is the main dealio in this. We get, like, uh, the option to evolve it into pretty much all Eevee evolutions at this point. Like, that doesn't include ones that were introduced afterwards, you know. It goes up to Espion and Umbrian and doesn't include anything after that, essentially. I haven't actually played a Pokemon game that actually expands further than that, to be honest. 
Well, you have incredible aptitude for battling. If you keep absorbing knowledge and experience, you'll become an outstanding trainer. There's no doubt about that. The operation of this battle sim system demands precision control. Of course, with my technique, there's utterly no problem. Rest assured, you're in my expert hands while you're plugged in and battling. So yeah, that's what that was all about. Hello, my colleague. You're done with training for now. You must be tired. But seeing you like this, why, Michael, you've grown up to be a fine young lad. Well, if only your father were here to see how much you've grown. Oh, I'm sorry. I promised that I wouldn't mention that. Please pay it no heed. Wow. It's just like, oh, right off the bat, you're just like, yep. Ah, uh, so is this, did his father die, or is he just away somewhere, or disappear? Actually, I'm starting to think maybe that is the case. Maybe he disappeared. But under sinister circumstances or something, I have no idea. Oh, hello, Michael. Welcome. I'm writing up a summary on the basics of Pokemon battles. Like I said, it's mostly basic information. But if you care to look, I've written my summary on the whiteboard. After all, the basics are important for a reason. But I've played many a Pokemon game, so I kind of already know. Of course, there are things where they never seem to explain that are more complicated. There's a book titled The Basic of Pokemon Battles and Applied Techniques. Like, all this kind of, like, you know, breeding Pokemon for specific kind of ways and all that, I'm still a noob on that, but they never seem to explain that. Those eyes. Uh, who talked? I think it's the professor guy. All right, Michael, have you finished training? Michael, this is director's office. Did you want to pay a visit to Professor Crane? <laughs> you don't need to be that stiffly official, Lily. But... Oh yes, I've heard the battle coach singing high praise about you, Michael. I have heard that your battling skills have improved dramatically recently. That's outstanding, Michael. Why am I keep saying your name? I don't know. I sure don't think I'd stand much of a chance against you. <laughs> I wish everyone wouldn't drown there with such gushing praise all the time. My son and daughter will become spoiled rotten. There's nothing to worry about. Both Michael and Jovi are wonderful kids. By the way, I don't think I've seen Jovi since lunchtime. Michael, I hate to bother you, but could you go find Jovi for me? Michael, I think you already know, but several research projects are in their critical phases in this lab. That's why your mother can't afford to take any time off right now at this instance, so please, honey, will you go find Jovi for me? Whatever. Thank you, I'm counting on you. I don't think she could have wandered off too far, but just in case, check out side two. I'm sorry, Michael. After five long years, this project is finally on the verge of coming together. But for that to happen, we can't do without your mother's expertise. Oh yes, I left a Peace RDA in your room, Michael. Go check it out. Peace RDA stands for Pokemon Digital Assistant. It's a very electronic tool. Useful as well, yes. A Peace RDA can be used for email, among other things. I'm sure that you'll find its many features useful. It's quite easy to use, Michael. I'm sure you'll have no trouble figuring that out. So yeah, the game starts off fairly slow, like really quite slow, I mean like I remember when I played it, it was like an hour or two into it and like I'd only had like maybe two battles. A Beast RDA is a very useful device. I've left one in your room, Michael, don't forget to pick it up. Jovi's been so rambunctious uh, lately, she's such a spirited girl. She thinks that she can do everything that you can, Michael, even though, of course, she's still a baby. I don't think she has wandered off too far, but please find her, Michael. Do do do. Wait, yeah, I think we go to our room first. It doesn't really tell you where anything is, of course. Wait. I, I, this, I thought, I'm still not used to this place. I mean, as I said, this is blind after all, but I, I have played the beginning of the game, but I still find the lab's layout a bit confusing. Phew, the switch is okay next to uh, Justice here. Man, there's so much to do. I'm not far from a panic attack. I might have to take a break. Oh, that's right, Michael. If you're gonna take a break, don't forget to save. So this is like the, uh... Interruption? I just got a game. <laughs> My brother just bought, uh, apparently bought me, uh, 
a kind of compilation PS3 game of like 40 different Mega Drive games. Which is nice. Like Sonic games, you got it, is even, I can see it, Echo the Dolphin. That one always stands out for me. Neat. I was just like thinking, just like, I could play that after recording this, and I was like, ah, shit, I'd still have to get the. Because my nephew still currently got, like, the PS2, and it's got the same lead that I use for my PS3, but where was I anyway? Yeah, so, like, heal with your Pokemon, this is the usual machine, this is the computer, you know, Pokemon storage and all that, and I don't know why, but every time I walk in this game and turn like that, you'll just do that. I think it might just be the analog stick or whatever. Whoa, 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 he's going out of control there. He's going out of control there! No, 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 I didn't want to click on the computer. Maybe I should just use the D-pad. No. This control pad is pretty faulty. Oh, Michael, welcome. Our project is at critical junction, so we're very busy. Oh, yes, feel free to use the PC and healing machine. We're in the midst of developing a system to purify shadow Pokemon. Purify is the term we use to describe the process in which a shadow Pokemon's closed heart is made to open again back to its natural state. You see, five years ago, criminals used artificial means to close the hearts of a Pokemon, turning them into fighting machines. We developed this system to save such afflicted Pokemon. We call this system the Purify Chamber. It's not necessarily in today's peaceful times, but one never knows what may happen. It's not like I'm foreshadowing that Shadow Pokemon is suddenly becoming a thing again. Huh? Here, here at the Pokemon HQ Lab, we undertake a great variety of research on Pokemon, from their ecosystems to battling. Uh, oh, it's you, Michael. You scared me out of my wits. You know, I'm so dedicated to my job, even when I'm asleep, I constantly think about work. Might as well talk to everyone. Hi, Michael. I haven't seen you for a while. Are you doing well? What I happen to be working on is a special machine for catching Pokemon. Huh? You want to know if it has anything to do with the Purify Chamber? You call this machine and the Purify Chamber are both the results of the same project. Having said that, I sincerely hope that the need to use this machine never arises. Foreshadowing. Absolutely. Hey, hey, hey. Use the controls. Hey, Michael, when you with Jovi? I saw Jovi with her Mimi earlier, so I figured you were with her, too. You know, that just sounds confusing. It's like, Mimi? What's a Mimi? Who's Mimi? It's apparently a Minion or Minion. I forget how the name's pronounced. Actually, I don't think I've ever heard the name pronounced, for one thing. And, yeah. I recall in Pokemon Emerald, I nicknamed that one Trollin or something like that. Because of uh, it being a pain in the ass to catch. Hey, hey. Oh boy, the world of Pokemon is so deep. The more I study them, the more I'm inspired by the very fantasticalness of it all. For example, you know all Pokemon have types and abilities, right? If you keep those facts in your mind and apply them to battling, you can always gain an advantage over your opponents. So, if we go over here... I've already kind of explored the, uh... Uh... Lab, I suppose. So I kind of have an idea where some stuff like that is. Happy music and a bird going at its mirror. Chip a chip a chip. It's Michael's room, but lately his kid sister appears to have the run of the place. Hey, there's something on the desk. But I'm going to ignore it for this. Potions! Turn! The beast on the If you're reading this email, then you must have obtained the Beast RDA. Try out its many features. By the way, Hadon was playing hide and seek with Jovi. Why not have a chat with him? Just like most of the people in this lab don't even have names. How am I supposed to figure that out, you know? But I know who it is, essentially. Have I seen Jovi anywhere? Come to think, I haven't seen her since lunch. This is her room, I assume. She's got, like, a plusle as well. 
Although I haven't seen her actually use any of the Pokemon, I don't think she even battles. But then again, I've only played the start of the game. My Pokemon and I, we're always together, even when we're sleeping. If you want to become friends with Pokemon, companionship is very important. Do 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 do. Wait, 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 we go downstairs. Or is it upstairs? I forget. Yeah, upstairs. Bird! We bring you ONBS News. Oh yeah, I remember like thinking of a joke when I like originally was playing it, and just thought ONBS News stands for Original News Bullshit. Authorities will still have uh, still have failed to find any traces of the cargo ship SS Libra, Li Libra since its sudden disappearances off the coast of Gadian Port. There have been no reports of flotsam that may indicate the ship sinking. The authorities appeared mystified by the way the ship vanished like smoke. There are reports that numerous Pokemon were on board, concerned it's rising over their welfare. Quagshire and a Psyduck. Sounds from the TV set appears to be disturbing the Pokemon. Have you played my... Well, it's not my game, but I played a role in the game. Uh, why am I sounding like Echo of Mr. Mr. Squash? But anyway, Psyduck uh, was in the uh, Pokemon channel, and I used to read the news and fall asleep occasionally. But Blue Scars Rag 97 is not LP that one, so Psy... I... Whatever. I haven't been to the Krabby Club for a while. It'd be nice to catch Rizal and Dazzle's show again. A huge cargo ship just doesn't vanish into thin air. They just have to be more careful searching. The ship probably had engine trouble. It must be adrift in the sea somewhere. Rumor has it that there was a new Pokemon that even Professor Crane has never seen on that missing ship. It's very worrying. I hope the Pokemon on board are safe from harm. You know, honestly, in the intro trailer thing, it showed, I think it's called a Bonsley, isn't it? It's like, uh, is it fourth generation, or is it, I don't even, I, I'm, like, after generation three, I kind of lost track, honestly. But it isn't in generation one, two, or three, so if that turns out to be the special Pokemon, I'm gonna be a bit disappointed, to be honest. Whoa, a cult line is hiding here. Excuse me, sir. Hey, Stormy! Oh, hi, it's you, Michael. It's me, Adon. You're looking for Jovi? We're supposed to be playing hide and seek right now, but isn't she around somewhere? Well, maybe she's gone off to Dr. Kamiko's manor. You know, in Pokemon games, don't characters just have some really odd names when there's like, you've got some basic names, and then you've got names like Adon and Kamiko. And then you've got default names like Michael. It just seems random. It's a big weird house southeast of here. Jovi's hit in our game of hide and seek. I wish you'd find me soon. My back stopped her. I don't think there's anything over here. Side this man. Okay, around this Pokemon, we place these regular Pokemon like so. Hi, Michael, it's my job to assemble the basic data set to chamber. Even if the chamber is built, it will be useless without this data. Holy shit, 25 minutes? Are you serious? We haven't even started, more or less. So what happens when you talk to everyone in a game? It takes time. But I'm so damn persistent with that. It's like, uh, I think it was in Muller 3 where they actually made a joke about that, where they're just like, you're the type of person that just has to talk to everyone, aren't you? He's just like, no, I think that's a good thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, Muller 3 and Earthbound, great games. Why can't more games have that kind of like. fourth wall breaking without, you know, like going too overboard with it? I mean, they did, kind of, but 
At the same time, it didn't feel like they went too overboard, because the plot was still quite engaging at the same time. Rather than it just being like a game where the characters break the fourth wall and that's about it. Wait, who goes there? <laughs> Look at that walk. You must be a burglar. Chobin will put you straight. Don't you move. Chobin is the name, and Chobin is the number one assistant to Dr. Kamiko. Chobin is the only assistant, so Chobin, ha Ch 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 Chobin has to be the number one assistant. That bird is number two assistant. This guy is odd. I mean, look at his lips. He's like, yes, I'm number one assistant. That means I've got a sun curl. Yes, it is. Well, it's only the beginning of the game, so what did you expect me to throw out? A freaking Tyranitar or some shit? No, a level five sun curl. Mm -hmm. Man, it never works. Just like, I've like, like originally, like the game crashed when I originally played it. And like, then I tried it again. And now I'm trying it a third time for helping it. So I've fought this fight three times. And I've used Bite every time, and it's never been able to make that bastard flinch. Not once. Well, you don't need to do that once, really, because it's only two turn battle. Unless I were to use, you know, other attacks and. Defeated! Jobin lost! Jobin lost glasses! And money! You've made Jobin angry now! Even though Jobin lost, you're still not going past Jobin! A uh, closer observation reveals that the subject is a child. Ergo, the subject is not a burglar! Ergo, the subject has a bird hidden somewhere, and ergo, why would I, like, think, oh, just because you're a child doesn't mean that you can't be a burglar, right? Right? That's stupid. They might send in child children to be, like, uh, ch children's? Well, children to be burglars, because some people are like that, complete bastards. But anyways, haha, <laughs> Tobin wishes you spoke up right away. Oh, that bird, so loud. Oh, Michael, Tobin apologizes for... Jumping to the wrong conclusion. Those eyes. Oh, big bro, what are you doing here? Oh, Joby gets it, big bro. You got lost, didn't you? Nope. Uh, uh, uh. There's no hiding stuff from Joby because Joby knows. This big house here is Dr. Gamekos. Dr. Gamekos' job is to make incredible inventions. There's a whole bunch of neat machines like they have at the Pokemon HQ lab. You should come in too, big brother. That guy's face, though. So. Well, you that girl's older brother. Sometimes he comes here. She wanders around everywhere. Chobin finds it hard to keep an eye on her so that she does not bother the doctor. Oh, yes, Michael, you will have a look at Dr. Kamiko's inventions. You will, yes? Okay, this way, please. Follow Chobin. Whatever. Okay, Jobin will now show you the inventions of the inestimable Dr. Kamiko. Dr. Kamiko's inventions, it needs to be said, are number one in the world. Jobin is full of admiration. Oh, why does Jobin know that they are in number one worldwide? That needs explaining. In the whole wide world, no one but Dr. Kamiko would invent such inventions. Therefore, they are number one in the world without question. Ah, uh, Dr. Kamiko, who is very great, is inventing in that room there. Hey, Doctor, what kind of funny machine are you making this time? Jovi wants to know. Uh-oh, that girl is at Dr. Kamiko's ride again. Jobin hopes she is causing no disturbance. That hair, though. Anyway, let Jobin acquaint you with just some of Dr. Kamiko's greatest inventions. Let the VCR roll. Man, those lips. Dr. Kamiko's inventions are number one in the world. Chobin's choice is this. Ta-da! The unhealthy sandals. The insole is stubbed with lumpy nubs that fail to simulate every pressure point in a family's way. Keep wearing these and Chobin will guarantee painful feet and chronic worsening of your health. Chobin thinks it is superlative. Superlative. 
Aha, incredible, is it not? There is much more than that, too. The Doctor's inventions, which are fantastic, can be seen on this monitor. Jobin gives you permission to use this anytime you like. All the inventions are quite like that one, in that they are kind of uh, not very good, but... <laughs> Doctor's Inventions, which are fantastic, can be seen on this one here. Blah, blah, blah. Permission. There's quite a few of them, so it's watch. Don't you make those inventions at number one in the world. Tobin's choice is this. Ta-da! The power draining light bulb. At first glance, it's an ordinary sort of plain light bulb, but it positively gulps electricity at ten times its usual rate. Keep using this, and the electricity bills will grow shockingly. And it won't be easy to find out why. Tobin thinks it is dazzling. Lord Kamingo's inventions are number one in the world. Show me choice is this. Ta-da! The superpower jet vacuum cleaner. Whenever it sucks up, it blows out the rear using powerful jet propulsion that spread turns dust into fine particles. The more you vacuum, the more your rooms get covered in the invisible coat of dust from corner to corner. Jobin thinks this is split Like a inventions are number one in the world. Jobin's choice is this. Ta-da! A power-saving refrigerator. And the purpose is to... It's, if the purpose is to conserve power, you won't be making a mistake with this refrigerator. It's truly one of a kind. It's an ultra-energy saver that usually stays off. It only turns on when its sensor detects someone in front of it. Food goes bad right away, but no one knows why because the fridge is on when it always opens. Jobin thinks this is splendid. Dr. Kamingo's inventions are number one in the world. Shobi's choice is this. Ta-da! The time cut recorder. It works with your video deck. When you're recording a TV program, this device ends recording five minutes early. If you record a movie, you'll be at the best part at the end when suddenly the screen goes blank. Shobi thinks this is a star on a shake. Dr. Kamingo's inventions are number one in the world. Shobi's choice is this. Ta-da! The discount calendar. It will amaze you, it only has 300 days in a year. Anyone using this will lose 65 days a year. Jobin thinks this is astounding. Is it? Nope, still one left. Dr. Kamiko's inventions are number one in the world. Jobin's choice is this. Ta-da, the Poker Pole. It's not a pole, it's a pole. Just like a Poker Ball, it's painted red and white, but it's just a pole. People will confuse you with a Poker Ball. Society will be engulfed in chaos. Jobin thinks this is magnificent. Uh, oh, still more? <laughs> Jeez, how many are there? Dr. Kamiko's inventions are number one in the world. Jobin's choice is this. Ta-da! The haunted radio. It works just like an ordinary radio, radio that is until two in the morning. If you listen very closely, you can hear a tiny voice. Please help me! Maybe Dr. Kamiko just put it in an odd program to do that. He denies it, but he must have done it absentmindedly. He must have. Tobin thinks this is frighteningly excellent. Yeah, that's the unhealthy sandals again. That's all of them. Did you come from the Pokemon HQ lab? My name's Wacken. I run the pot shop in Gutian Port. How is the lab's director, Professor Crane, yes? Ah, yes. If you would be so kind, please tell the professor that the machine part he needed is ready and that he should come get it any time. Hi, big brother. This is a funny drawing. It's a really detailed drawing of a really weird machine. Huh? Are you going home already, big brother? But you just got here. Oh, Jovi gets it. Jovi has to show you how to go home, right? Okay, that's what Jovi will do. Jovi will take you home. Maybe let's go home with Big Brother. Do they always move that way? Jovi joined the party. Look at that scientist man with that hair. I think that's his greatest invention right there. <laughs> how the hell he's able to defy gravity like that. Okay, let's move out. Jovi will visit again, Doctor. Bye bye. <laughs> Incidentally, child, how long have you been here? Hmm. That's how Doctor Kamiko is all the time. 
Children in that uh, in said that a genius has difficult sensibilities for ordinary people. The sensibilities mean you're kind of absent-minded in a fog. Don't people say Professor Crane's a genius? You there, you child! That area's off limits. There's a book titled "What Makes an Invention: A Bringer of Joy." It's lined with difficult-looking books. It's lined with "Let's Go." Jovi will take Big Brother home today, so Jovi has to go too. Bye bye. Next time Jovi comes, please uh, let Jovi try those googly googly glasses. Promise? Jovi cannot possibly make that sort of a promise. She is your sister. Do something about her, please. She never listens to what Jovin says ever. Well, she never listens to what I have to say because I'm a silent protagonist. So I don't have anything to say. Dear Muggle, you appear to have traveled far in your search for Jovi. Please come back to the HQ lab as soon as you find her. I need your help with something. What is it? Why is it? Email from the professor. He wants you to come home quickly. Jovi is worried about letting you go by yourself, big brother. So Jovi will go home too. Let's go right now. You know, I haven't even commented on this, but look at this. Huge, right? And when he zoomed in on the cutscene, he's just like... And then, when it zooms out, it's like... You'd think the Groudon would be a lot bigger than that. I don't know why he's like clearly got a very sinister looking place. I don't know if he's a villain or not, to be honest. Because you know how Pokemon games are, like, they tend to like make it blatantly obvious, but he's probably not a villain. He could be, but he could also not be. I don't know yet. Oh, hi, Mommy, we're back. Oh, Joby, haven't I told you not to wander away by yourself? No, Mummy, you don't understand. Big Brother was lost, so Joby brought him here. If Joby weren't there, Joby bet he'd be crying by now, saying he can't go home. Right, Big Brother? Oh, my, my, Joby, you are such a brave and resourceful girl. But that's quite enough for today. Besides, Adon must be tired of waiting for you. Oh, my gosh, I was in the middle of hide and seek. Okay, Big Brother, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Michael, thanks for finding Jovi for me. Oh yes, Professor Crane wanted to see you, Michael. Go see him right away, please. Da -da -da -da, nothing new to say. Yeah, this comes up with a kind of bullshit kind of bit here when we talk to this guy. I said, Oh, Michael, welcome back. Who are you gone for? Far away? Huh? The director? He went downstairs just a little while ago. Professor Crane did. Uh, you didn't bump into him? Yeah, he's down there. We didn't see him catch the elevator, because how could he? I mean, we were using it at the time. But suddenly he's over there. You know what I find odd? You can see them blatantly obvious looking in your direction, even though there's a wall there. That's kind of odd. She's like, Oh, I see you back there. Hi there, Michael. I've been waiting for you. I wanted to show you the snack machine. Look at my walk. I must have my arms behind my back at all times. Has Adon said anything to you about uh, the snack machine? Yes, I think. Oh, I see. Yes. Well, we've named a special machine for catching Pokemon the snack machine. Well, we're kind of, uh, you know, since the previous game had the same thing, we thought we'd name it the same thing. A little of us Adon and I were developing it, and now it's finally finished. I'd like to begin testing it immediately. Michael, will you help us? Okay, step inside, please. I should tell you the snag machine is an outrageous piece of work. After all, it's used for stealing Pokemon from another trainer in battle. But we did make this to steal Pokemon indiscriminately from trainers. Michael, you've heard of Shadow Pokemon, haven't you? They are Pokemon that have been turned into fighting machines after having their hearts closed by artificial means. They're to be pitied. But the odd thing about that in Pokemon games is a lot of times, you know, you're just battling and training and all that, so... They kind of tend to be used that way a lot of times anyway. Which is pretty... Uh, shitty when you really think about it too much. But it's a game! 
We developed the sag machine to take back such modified shadow Pokemon. Why this machine is needed now, I can explain later. But for now, I'd like you to test uh, our snag machine. After all, you're the best trainer at this lab. I mean, you've got a level 10 even for crying out loud. All of our other Pokemon are under that level. The snag machine is inside this gate. Try equipping it right away, please. No, I must talk to you first. Again. I mean, yes, 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 yes. What have you got to say, though? Excuse me. Hmm, I feel all nervous and excited. It's like, wow, look at my fingers. Wow, it fits you perfectly. It looks cool, too, by all. Except the uh, Pokemon Coliseum protagonist totally wore it better. I'll also add a new feature to your piece.da. It's called the Shadow Monster. It lets you check data on the Shadow Book when you've encountered. How convenient. Display data on all Pokemon met so far. Oh, wait, that's a strategy memo. Thank you, Adon. Or Adon, whatever your name's about. And that's it, Michael. That's spot on. From here on, it will be a lot easier to just show you how it works in practice rather than trying to describe it. Let's go upstairs to the Battle Sim System room. Whoops, how silly of me. I almost forgot to give you these. In order to use a sand machine, you need at least one Pokeball, so I'll give you these. Gain five Pokeballs. Pokeballs aren't used in the Ori region, so we import them from another region. Although the uh, intro scene seemed to indicate that uh, you can, can catch wild Pokemon, although it's probably very limited, I'd imagine, and I don't know where or when you actually get to that point. Okay, now we're set. Let's hurry over to the rector. Suddenly. <laughs> what the fuck was that? W what's going on? Who are you people? It's a cliffhanger! <laughs> you get the last line now. What's happening? Did you hear a scream from the reception area? Yes. But we're going to leave it for next time. So I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.